All right, so let's start talking about some other types of analyses. Keep in mind, really important to think about the physics that's being encoded in the math, and the physics is really fundamental. The central idea here is that interaction causes change. This is really important. So, for example, net force from other objects on the receiver, the one that we're looking at, whatever object it is, will cause a change in the motion, acceleration, right? So there's the change right there. Of course, mass resists that change. Net force interactions cause that change. We're going to reframe this. So we're going to talk about net impulse from other objects on the thing that we're looking at, the one object, causes the change in momentum, P is going to be our letter for momentum. And we're also going to look at energy, the net work from other objects on R causes a change in kinetic energy of R. Okay? And we'll have to tinker with that and get that one right. But that gives you a little framework. Interactions cause change. That idea, keep in mind. Okay, let's go over here and see how this all comes about theoretically. We're really reframing our old ideas. And if you understand that, it's not like you're learning something new. You're learning a new way to analyze and think about things. So we've got our kinematics analysis that your master's at, right? You've got time, instants, and intervals, positions, displacements, distances, velocities, speeds, accelerations. You got force analysis going on. And what we're going to do is take those and rewrite those and define some new terms. And we're going to rewrite these as the conservation principle. So this is a very useful way to analyze things. So we're starting with the momentum and energy. We're going to start with the momentum. Some books do it the reverse. Either way it kind of works. Momentum falls out really nicely from Newton's law, so you'll see that. I want to point out at the start something that to just keep in the back of your head, and as you learn these things, go back to it and keep them in mind, and you'll, you won't fully appreciate it until you do a bunch of problems and think about them. But momentum is a vector, just like force is a vector. So I sometimes like to put a little reminder, vector and vector, okay? And what that means is that a plus for a vector is one direction, whichever way you want to choose plus, plus or plus and negative is the other way. And the implication here is that negative 9 meters per second is still faster than plus 2 meter per second. And a meter per second is about 2 miles an hour, right? So, but it just means you're going in the negative direction, but it's faster than that. Or negative 100 newtons is stronger, a stronger force, than plus 25 newtons. The negative here, again, being a direction not the strength of the thing. In contrast, energy is a scalar. And so for a scalar, positive actually does mean more than zero. Zero doesn't have to mean nothing. It can be a reference amount. And then negative is less than zero. So contrast these things. Think about it. It'll take you a moment to wrap your head around what I'm saying. But for example, a height of negative 9 meters is less than plus 2 meters. Or if I want, my fist is about 10 centimeters. So if I were to take, let's just take something here. Let's call that a height of 0. 1, 2, so that would be a height of plus 20 centimeters. And 1, this would be a height of negative 10 centimeters. And this is less height than this. And this is more and more and more. And if you don't believe it, take something and drop it over your head. Now drop it over your head when it's higher up. That's more height. Independent of which way you call plus or minus, this is more height. Okay. Similarly, energy is a scalar. And so negative 10 or negative 100 joules is less than plus 25 joules. You'll see this later, but I just want to plant the seed. Don't overthink it right now. So plus and minus mean different things for vectors and scalars, don't they? 
important distinction. So why do we want to reframe this? Well, because frankly, the forces can get really messy and the kinematics can be really hard to keep track of. So I've written a, a brief statement here. These are useful when there's too much going on with forces. Maybe there's too many forces or they're just hard to model those forces. And let me show you what I mean by that right now. Okay, so forces, how do I model this force here? These guys are going to hit. How do I model that? It's, it's kind of tricky, right? How do I model the force that happens when it bounces, as it bounces? How do I model these things? How do I model, well, we'll, we'll talk about this. Let's go over here and we'll come back to our demos in just a second. So now we're going to focus on momentum. We'll get to energy next. Momentum is especially useful for short time interactions, okay? like collisions and explosions. You can apply it elsewhere, but you know, when you can use force in, in kinematics, that's fine. You get the same thing. But for collisions and explosions, momentum is typically a, a great choice. Okay? And uh, there are definitions. I'll run through these definitions real quickly and show you some of these. Things. So the definitions, real quick, we're going to derive these momentum. Given the lowercase p, momentum of object A is the mass of A times the velocity of that same object, the velocity of A. The impulse or interaction with another is written J with a vector or sometimes I with a vector from some other object, say B, on A. And again, this is an introduction, so relax your mind. This is the integral of the force vector from B on A over some time of interaction. This is the time of interaction. From earlier to later. But now, I'm just going to again plant the seed. So, so hold on, we'll get back to this. The, later, the earlier is going to be just before, and the later is going to be just after. And this time is the time of that interaction. And you'll see what we mean as we go on. Okay, just come back to it. Now you know that basic calculus, you can also write this as the average force times the total time interval from earlier to later, or from just before to just after. Also, you know that graphically, when you do an integral, it's the area between this axis and that axis. So force versus time, sketched this way, would have the impulse here. Impulse is seen as the graphical area, okay? Just as an introduction. Laws that we're going to see, there's two laws. The net impulse causes change in momentum, or impulse momentum sometimes called. Net impulse causes change in momentum. Usually what we're doing is looking at one object that's getting hit, maybe a baseball. Or conservation of momentum, where in this case we include all interacting objects. So we're going to derive these now and see where these derivations come in the next video. Let me just again say, show you. Uh, example, hit a baseball with a bat. That's a pretty short duration, that contact. And the delta T only happens while that's happening. If you see this in slow motion, it's crazy baseballs, like squished down. It's nuts. But they're squishing down, right? And so when that interaction happens, it's a little hard to model. For example, when these, when these guys collide, they squish. And you know springs. Springs, when you stretch them more and more, the force is stronger. And you squeeze them more and more, the force is stronger. So during that interaction, the force is varying. Maybe it's a Hooke's Law force, but it's hard to say. Look at this. A uh, magnet. Like that doesn't touch, and yet there's a, an interaction that happens over a short time. How about this guy? 
Where's that delta T? The delta T occurs in the explosion of this expanding. And again, there's elasticity here, but there's an explosion. I can have an explosion here too. Okay. Here we go. Actually, let's do it this way. There we go. And let's do an explosion. There's an explosion. And the delta T is only during that interaction, just before to just after, just during that time. Now, if I look at one, I'm going to use impulsive momentum. If I look at two, I'm going to use conservation momentum, as long as they're not held in place by something else. True two here. When I get a bouncing ball, bouncing ball, there's squishiness. You see that squishiness. And so the force is happening during that time only, not while it goes up, just just before and just after the squishiness. Okay, so lots of examples here and a similar kind of idea, and that's going to be the utility of momentum. Let's derive those in the next video.